and mainly mobility of PhD new generation. You will hear a lot about PhD new generation students. It's a new concept that the ministry has launched. It's a concept to select the best students among among the best, let's say, to, um, to constitute the, the academic and scientific capital of uh, universities of tomorrow. In this context, we are proud of the Moroccans' participation in Erasmus+, which facilitated over 100,000 inbound and outbound mobili mobility since 2014, placing Morocco among the most active South Mediterranean countries in this program. Uh, I would like also to highlight that the European Union is playing a crucial role in funding a big program to support international mobility of the PhD new generation, covering initiatives such as short mobilities and co-supervision. Uh, this program has a budget of 6 million euros and will start in 2024. Dear colleagues, the Moroccan Higher Education Scientific Research and Innovation Strategy, as I said, called uh, Pact Esri, aligns with the ambition of the Morocco's new development model to become a regional and a continental hub for higher education and research. And we are glad to announce that Morocco is ranked as the third most influential country in Africa, following Egypt and South Africa, and tops the list of the Maghreb, according to the Global Soft Power Index study in 2024. Education and science is considered as one of the eight indicators to assess the soft power of 193 countries. Since the last edition, science and education gained four positions in Morocco. And this is underscoring the key role of education, not only in advancing our nation, but also in diplomatic endeavors. In conclusion, hosting today's seminar in Morocco signifies our commitment to playing a role, a central role in North, South, and South-South co cooperation, considering the participation of representatives from 50 partners from both North and South. And we are excited to forge more collaboration in higher education and scientific research with you. So let's, let us continue to embrace the power of international collaboration in driving the growth and excellence of our universities. Together we can create a brighter future for new generations. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much. Well, now we shall continue with a video uh, coming from uh, our um, deputy head of mission from the Greek Embassy in Rabat, Efthimio Foka. My name is Efthimio Fokas, and I'm the counselor at the Greek Embassy in Morocco. Uh, I'm very, very sorry that I cannot stand before you on this significant occasion due to unexpected events. And I would like to extend the, greet, uh, the, the warmest greetings of my ambassador, Ms. Tessa Katapodis, who just arrived to Morocco and she couldn't make it. Uh, I'm particularly honored by the involvement of Greece among the other MedNet countries who co-organize uh, this interesting seminar. For us Europeans, but also for all the non-Europeans who have profited from uh, the Erasmus program, it symbolizes more than just an academic exchange. It represents a gateway to new opportunities, a catalyst for innovation, and a bridge between countries and continents. And I believe that this seminar is also a unique opportunity for southern Mediterranean countries and sub-Saharan countries to explore the potentials offered by the Erasmus program. All of us participants in this event reiterate today our commitment to building a world where education knows no boundaries, where the exchange of ideas knows no limits, and where collaboration knows no borders. And we reaffirm also our shared vision of a more inclusive and interconnected world. In closing, I extend my deepest gratitude to each one of you for your unwavering commitment and for your participation in this uh, important endeavor. Thank you very much. Bye.
Now I shall call to the stand our member of the administrative board of directors. Ah, Latifa first. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I missed it. Okay, so now we have Latifa Dadawi, which is uh, from the National Erasmus Plus office here in Morocco. Thank you, Latifa. I will try to be brief because it's not one of my strangers. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, dear distinguished rectors and vice rectors, dear colleagues and friends, because here today we are in family, Erasmus family. I'm very happy and proud that we are here in this first transnational cooperation activity, uh, Erasmus meeting, uh, held outside Europe, here in Morocco, in this beautiful and excep excep exceptional campus of um 6 p I want to thank the Midnet NAs and especially the Greek National Agency, the organizer of this um, uh, amazing event, uh, for their trust to come to Morocco to organize this big venue. The um 6 p for their great support and usual great spirit, great spirit of partnership and cooperation. This is not our first cooperation with um 6 p and this is our second one. The first one was another big and uh, impactful uh, uh, event. It was a conference, an international conference that we organized in 2020 called Erasmus Scientific Days. It was uh, a very special conference uh, that aimed at the time to valorize the results of Erasmus projects around internationalization, mobility, inclusion, and learning and teaching practices held in Marrakesh. Uh, and that resulted in a scientific publication in Springer Nature. My gratitude again, Mr. President, for your great support and professionalism of your team. Then I need to thank our universities here that, that are here today, and thank, a special thank to the presidents that, um, that honored us uh, of, of their presence today, and to all the participants. A special thank also to our Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their great help regarding the visa of our participa participants, and all of us here, you know, that it was not, it was very challenging at what point. Yes, it was a brilliant exercise of cooperation and teamwork and that we should be proud of. We are here for the same aim, to strengthen the partnership with Midnet countries, but also it is a great opportunity for our African countries to build up and reinforce the cooperation between our universities, because this is one also of the objectives of Erasmus+. Plus. Morocco's participation in Erasmus is very important. If we merge all the actions, I mean mobility, capacity building, uh, Erasmus Mundus joint master degrees, John Monet activities, we are proud to be first or second uh, uh, among the region, among the South Med region uh, that we are belonging to. It gives the opportunity it means that we gave the opportunity for more than 17,000 staff and students from our universities, all the universities and higher education institutions, to enhance and scale up and enhance their skills, but also to discover other culture. More than 60% of those mobilities, for example, but also capacity building projects are done with MedNet countries, especially um, with Spain, France, and Portugal, which are the, the, the classical partners uh, with Morocco. So, you understand that today our objective is to deepen this relationship with those countries, but also to strengthen the relationship with the other countries of Mednet, uh, of Mednet region. I will end up uh, reminding you that the motto of, uh, of Erasmus Plus is enriching lives, opening minds, and we join Erasmus, we, we join uh, EM6P on that. We are, it is all about minds, but also Erasmus. I also add warming hearts because Erasmus, it is about education, but also it is about bridging uh, cultures, creating bridges between cultures and um, uh, making, uh, making um, youth and, uh, and people collaborate and coordinate. So let's Erasmus and thank you very much for this beautiful event. Thank you, Latifa. And now I will call to the stand to our own member of uh, uh, 
Administrative Board of Directors from the State Scholarships Foundation, Mrs. Laura Alprade, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Greek Scholarship Foundation, ICI, being the Greek National Agency for Erasmus Plus, uh, in cooperation with the MedNet uh, countries, um, organizes this unique uh, transnational cooperation uh, seminar and event that brings together representatives from uh, many countries, uh, also uh, African countries and give, the, give them a unique opportunity of networking <clears throat> um, and exchange uh, practices, uh, fresh ideas, in order to set up a new project. Uh, <clears throat> the Erasmus International Action enables students to explore new countries, to immerse into different culture, learn about the educational system, and gain knowledge in general. <clears throat> Building networks through international mobility further contributes to the exchange of academic knowledge and best practices in higher education in the framework of its internationalization. So, <clears throat> on behalf of the ICI board, I would like to warmly thank the MedNet partner countries, the European Commission, as well the University Mohammed VI uh, uh, Polytechnic, the National Erasmus Office of Morocco, the Minister of Education, <clears throat> and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Morocco, as well as the Greek Embassy in Rabat for their continuous effort and support in organizing this uh, three days event. <clears throat> I come from a small country but with a long history and where great philosopher lived. I would like, therefore, to share with you a famous Socrates saying. Uh, what he says, Socrates, is all I know that I know nothing. It reminds us to stay modest and curious, to keep asking questions, to realize that others might know something we don't know. In this spirit, I invite you to work together in this unique learning activity using Erasmus Plus program, uh, strategically as a tool for progress, so to achieve mutually beneficial results for both students, academic staff, as well as for the local society. Thank you very much. Good uh, success to your work. And now we will close the circle of salutations by calling to the stand our director of the Erasmus uh, uh, NA Agency for uh, uh, Education and Training, Mr. Leonidas Papastadiou. Dear participants, um, distinguished, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, salam aleikum. Uh, I am the director of the Greek National Agency for Erasmus Plus program, and I am in the good position to tell you that we in the Greek National Agency we are very uh, pleased and uh, honored to be the organizing, national agency, the organizing agency of this transnational cooperation activity under the title Strengthening International Dimension uh, in Higher Education. On behalf of the Greek National Agency and the 11 co-organizing agencies, member of, uh, members of the um, MedNet countries, 
namely Portugal, Spain, um, France, Italy, Slovenia, uh, Croatia, Serbia, uh, North Macedonia, Turkey, Greece, Malta and Cyprus. I would like to uh, thank all of you for your um, for your uh, reaction, immediate reaction to our initiative and to our invitation and for your participation here. Many thanks also to the University, Polytechnic University Mohammed VI for offering the, the, its uh, uh, amazing uh, premises, its staff who helped a lot, support for their support in order to um, prepare properly the, um, the activity. And many thanks to uh, the uh, National Erasmus Office, the Moroccan National Erasmus Office, and the other uh, authorities that contributed a lot uh, for, the, um, for the preparatory work, visas, etc. This transactional operation activity is very important because its main objective is to strengthen your uh, international dimension in higher education. And this objective meets, need, uh, meets the absolute necessity, the need for uh, um, inclusive, participatory, green, and digital education in this rapidly changing uh, world we live. There is another reason uh, why it is important, the seminar. It is the very first time, to my best knowledge, that uh, such uh, an activity, a TCA, within the context of Erasmus Plus program, uh, is being held beyond the frontiers of the program countries, beyond Europe. It is the very first time. So it's big, thinking of the 130 participants from 30 countries. It's new, it's historical, and it is of a great importance. Uh, aiming at strengthening the international dimension and with a view to maximizing the, the potential um, the potential collaboration between African countries and African and Mednet countries. Uh, we promote through the seminar the relevant actions of the, Europe, of the Erasmus Plus program, both centralized and decentralized. Uh, one of the actions promoted is the International Credit Mobility, ICM. It is a centralized action. We implement the action and we uh, monitor the action. I am in the good position to tell you that no book or, or any other activity can, can ever uh, equal the intensity of living and working abroad with colleagues of another country. Uh, that's why as a director, when I am asked always what Erasmus is all about, I always say it's work and pleasure. Uh, now I am the last to address an official uh, salutation and follows the program, the working sessions. I, I, we tried hard to keep a balance between working session and cultural and social activities in order to give participants a unique opportunity to networking, to partner finding, to sharing fresh ideas, um, new approaches, in order to set up new project proposals. I am convinced that uh, participants will enjoy the, uh, the upcoming session. And uh, I am sure that it's going to be a TCA full of energy, fresh ideas, and 
something good will come out of it. Thank you very much. So, as the Deputy Director of the Greek National Agency Education and Training, I would also like to give my thanks and uh, for all the help to my colleagues from our uh, NA, to all the NAs from MedNet countries, to uh, UM6P, and all uh, from the NEO, Latifa, and all uh, the people that worked for this uh, event. Thank you so much. So, we shall, <laughs> we shall move on by giving the floor to the first keynote speech, uh, speaker, who is uh, a policymaker officer from Erasmus Plus International Cooperation, from uh, Director General of Education and Culture, uh, Mr. Christos Aivaliotis who is going to share with us the opportunities for international cooperation uh, in the framework of Erasmus Plus, ICM, International Credit Mobility. Please. Hello, good morning everybody. Um, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here um, among you, among all the practitioners, the big Erasmus Plus family. My name is Christos Eivaliotis. I'm a policy officer uh, from the European Commission and I'm the coordinator of the International Credit Mobility Action. I'm sure many of you are familiar. I will try to um, present you an overview of the uh, international dimension of Erasmus Plus. And I will focus mainly on international credit mobility because my colleague from the executive agency will then focus on capacity building and Erasmus Mundus. So I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with what uh, Erasmus Plus is about. Uh, I would like to um, focus on the fact that the Erasmus Plus 2021-2027 is uh, the most international program we ever had. It offers more international opportunities than ever before. Uh, especially for African countries. We can see how uh, the African countries are uh, spread between two Erasmus Plus region, region three, South Mediterranean, and region nine, Sub-Saharan Africa. This is quite important uh, for uh, the universities that might be newcomers to the program uh, because it affects the way you apply for, for funding. Uh, the Erasmus Plus International Dimension, or as we call it, the Heading 6 funding in our uh, European Commission jargon, brings an additional 2.2 billion euros into the program. This money comes from uh, the EU's external policy uh, funds, so it's funds that are supposed to uh, promote um, our external relations with partners around the world, and they are brought into the program to support, uh, as you can see, primarily higher education, but also vocational education and training, youth, uh, sport, and other sectors. You'll see there that um, with the uh, red bars in the graphs, we have the, the new uh, level of funding. The one for Sub-Saharan Africa is particularly uh, increased in the new program period. South Mediterranean still makes it in the top three of the priority regions we have in the new program. Just to give an overview of all the opportunities that exist in higher education, of course we have the international credit mobility about which I will uh, talk in a bit. Uh, we have capacity building for higher education. So these two actions that you can see in bold are exclusively uh, funded by the international dimension of the program. So these are two actions that uh, only concern mobility and cooperation with our partner countries around the world. Then, of course, we have Erasmus Mundus Joint Masters, the Erasmus Mundus Design Measures, which is a new action uh, of, of the new program, and the Jean Monnet activities. These three actions you can see with an asterisk, um, they are funded by the main Erasmus Plus budget, but they are topped up by our international dimension. So these actions are open to, all, to universities all around the world. We have other opportunities that are not uh, exclusively for higher education, such as the Erasmus virtual exchanges that um, are applicable both in higher education and in the youth field. 
Thank you. Um, I will not expand uh, a lot on these virtual exchanges, but I understand that during our workshops, we'll have the chance to discuss about the practicalities of it. Um, and there is also capacity building for vocational education and training. I understood from the list of participants that some of the universities present are also active in vocational education. So it's an important aspect to consider that in some cases, depending on the status of your university, you might be eligible to apply both for capacity building higher education and for capacity building uh, in vocational education and training. These opportunities um, you see on the screen, they are uh, open to a limited number of regions, but both South Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan African region have access to them. I'm sure you all familiar with the concept of a NEO, National Erasmus Plus Office. Uh, you, we all know Latifa. Um, and of course, next to the NEOs now, we have um, a new uh, network of stakeholders, the Erasmus Plus National Focal Points, that exist only since 2022. So um, in South Mediterranean, we have the NEOs established for a long time. Uh, I'm sure uh, the universities in the region have been in close contact with them. Uh, the Erasmus Plus National Focal Points, they're a bit of a different nature. They are um, individuals with their teams based primarily in the ministries of education in the partner countries. But both types of stakeholders have the same objectives. Uh, their objectives are to promote Erasmus Plus and to support applicants, both individuals and institutions locally. So um, from uh, the European Commission side, um, DG EAC uh, and our executive agency were in very close contact. We organized a lot of um, physical and online meetings, uh, thanks to the NEOs and the focal points, and we uh, hope that this brings the program closer to the final beneficiaries. The list of all the NEOs and the focal point contacts uh, will be found on the TCA Padlets. Uh, the organizers informed me that the links are already there under Erasmus Plus educational material. So uh, don't be shy. Please get in touch, um, not only with the NEOs, but also with the focal points when you're um, considering to expand your activities in a new country uh, in the African region. Just to have a recap of what I've said so far, um, the higher budget, uh, there is a higher budget dedicated to international dimension in the new program. We have new international actions in the higher education field, but not only. Uh, and we have new stakeholders worldwide. So already in 2021, when we were uh, starting this new program, we understood there is a, an urgent need to deepen existing partnerships, but also to expand the network of contacts we have. Therefore, we um, decided uh, in 2022 to expand the eligibility of the TCAs. The TCAs could focus thematically on the Erasmus Plus International Dimension uh, until 2022, but there was an issue of eligibility, eligibility of participants coming from outside Europe and the eligibility of uh, location of the TCA. So all of this changed as of 2023. And I can confirm what the director of the Greek National Agency said. Indeed, the very first TCA to take place outside Europe is in Ben Gerir, Morocco. It's taking place now with all of you. So you can give yourselves a round of applause for being here in the very first. <laughs> to go more into the practicalities of the program, and we all know that when people think about Erasmus, it's really about um, mobility in the mind of many citizens. Although we have done a lot of promotion and a lot of um, events to break a bit this myth that Erasmus is only about mobility. But this is how it started uh, back in the 1980s. So um, as of 2020, uh, 2014, the International Credit Mobility supports this type of mobility uh, of higher education students and staff also with the rest of the world. And in the new program, we built on the experience acquired between 2014 and 2020. Uh, it covers uh, all disciplines. It covers all levels of education. Um, when it comes to staff, it's both for academic and administrative staff. Um, you'll see that I have put in red everything that is a new element of, of the new program. So the minimum duration of studying or having a traineeship was decreased to two months 
from three that was in the previous program for uh, purposes of inclusion. And we also introduced a blended mobility, which is, let's say, a lesson we got through COVID pandemic about the necessity um, to, to have more flexible formats of mobility, but also to, um, uh, to increase the digital dimension of the program. Uh, both these um, uh, aspects also enhance the uh, inclusion and uh, for those that will follow the workshop on the international credit mobility we will have the opportunity to talk more about the inclusion in this part of Erasmus Plus. Uh, here we have a lot of uh, technical steps. I don't want to now take a lot of time. I understand we will talk in more details during the workshops, but uh, all partners in an ICM project can send and host students and staff. Nevertheless, due to the nature of the funding we receive uh, for the international credit mobility, uh, mo almost all African countries uh, can um, send but not host bachelor and master students. Uh, especially for uh, the South Mediterranean countries, we know that this has been a, a big change because in the previous program period it was possible. Um, I don't want to go now to, into the details. It, it has to do with legal constraints of the budget that we use. Uh, you can find in this list, uh, in this link there with the uh, OECD's list which countries have this restriction. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the European universities have uh, an intra-European mobility budget uh, with the code name Key Action 131 for those uh, among you that are practitioners. And with this budget line, they can still fund their students on bachelor and master level to come uh, for a traineeship or a study period in Africa. So Erasmus Plus still covers this. It's just a different uh, part of the program that offers the budget. Here we see the rates. Again, with, uh, um, with the red, you can see all the rates that we have increased in the last years. There is a big effort from our side, again, to um, improve the inclusivity of, of the action. Therefore, um, ICM already in the previous program period had one of the highest rates uh, for students and for staff. And we are trying also to take uh, into account the latest developments with inflation, with the rise of cost for um, uh, air flights. So all of this has been increasing uh, considerably. But of course, um, overall, the Erasmus Plus program aims to offer a contribution to the cost of the participants. So it can never be 100% uh, covered. For the newcomers among you, uh, just to clarify that um, it's always the universities in Europe that apply for an ICM uh, project, but they have to include in their application all their partners around the world. So uh, for the African uh, universities among us, uh, you cannot be direct applicants, but you will be involved, as we'll see also in the workshops, in the application process by providing your input, and your input will be crucial to secure a very high score leading to, uh, to funding. Upon a successful passing of the quality criteria, an ICM grant is uh, offered to the European University spread in different regions. And before any mobility can start, an interinstitutional agreement needs to be signed. The interinstitutional agreement is, again, of, of very big importance. It outlines um, the cooperation plan that exists between the two universities from number of uh, staff or students they want to mobilize on what level of education, um, aspects such as uh, support for visa, uh, for accommodation, uh, for inclusion purposes. But um, uh, we'll see that also in the workshop. So again, now I'm bringing you the, uh, the big picture only. Here we see all um, the steps of an ICM project implementation. All of these will be uploaded in the Padlet. No need to take notes now. You'll find it um, on the very nice digital environment that our organizers offer to us. I would like also to spend a few seconds on the last part, the purple part on recognition. It's very important. It's not only uh, important to get people mobile uh, and offer them this opportunity, but the recognition of their learning outcomes will ensure that there will be more and more mobilities in the future. When people uh, go on to this journey to realize that everything they've done will not be recognized by home, this is counterproductive for the action. 
uh, it's, uh, it's an indicator that we follow very closely from, uh, from the European Commission side. Um, it's part of the final report for the universities. Uh, it's uh, part of the uh, national agency indicators that we collect. So I couldn't stress enough how important recognition is and all of this needs to already be specified in your interinstitutional agreements. Um, this is a generic timeline of, uh, of the annual call for applications. Uh, it follows, it, very rarely it, it uh, changes from this uh, pattern, so around October or November, um, every year we have the publication of the call, uh, with the deadline being in February uh, of, the, of the call here. The evaluation process lasts between March and July, the, inform the information to applicants July and August, and all our projects start on the 1st of August, uh, to be on time for the academic semester. Here, maybe it's uh, even more interesting. Uh, we're talking about the money. Uh, so we have a bit more than 1 billion euros for the new uh, period. You can see um, marked in red how the budget dedicated to the different uh, regions has increased, especially for sub-Saharan Africa. In the previous program, you can see ACP. It was Africa, Caribbean, Pacific as, as a unified region. And now we can come down to the international mobility between Africa and the MedNet. Certainly there is great potential. The whole African continent represents up to one-third of the total ICM budget. The MedNet on their side includes one-third of the Erasmus Plus countries, but they receive around 45% of the ICM budget for Africa. So the potential is there. Let's have a look where we stand so far. In this table, uh, you can see which MedNet countries have uh, had sufficient or insufficient demand in the two regions. Meaning that when you see one of the, of the call years marked in red, meant that there was more budget available than the applications that these countries received. Therefore, for the uh, universities that we have here, the NEOs, the focal points uh, coming from uh, South Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan Africa, it would be a very good strategic decision to also um, make contacts, thanks to this TCA, with the countries that you can see there with some of the dates marked in red, because that means they have more available budget. Nevertheless, a quality proposal is always needed. It doesn't mean that if you do a bad application to a national agency that has a lot of money and spent, that it will receive funding. But let's say the, de the demand is lower, therefore a good application will more easily secure um, uh, a grant uh, compared to a, a European country that has already a lot of, um, a lot of demand for either Sub-Saharan Africa or South Mediterranean. In our Erasmus Plus program guide, there is also a target for the South Mediterranean <clears throat> that uh, maximum 15% of the budget uh, should be spent per country in the region. Uh, this has not been yet achieved in calls 2022 and 2023, but we see a positive trend. So we see that the budget is spread more and more equally. And in this table, we can see among the MedNet countries with how many uh, of the five North African countries, they have already uh, funded mobilities. So you'll see that there are some uh, champions in, among the MedNet countries, Greece, Spain, Italy, Turkey, that already cooperate with all five. Uh, and with green, you can see those that have, uh, from first call to the second, increase their, um, their presence in North Africa. Again, if you see, um, a MedNet country that doesn't cooperate with, uh, with all the North African countries, that means it's an opportunity. It's, it's an unexplored um, uh, territory, and therefore, uh, the more diversification of partners uh, we might have is the better for, uh, for the program, uh, and is the better also for the national agency when they do their selection. There is always um, the effort to bring newcomer institutions, but also newcomer countries uh, per national selection. Um, the same for Sub-Saharan Africa. We have a maximum of 8% of the budget per country that should be spent. Um, 
Again, it has not uh, been achieved yet in the calls 2020 to 2023, so we have certain countries that absorb more, but again, the trend is positive. Already in 2023, and the first um, data we have from 2024, unfortunately, we only closed applications two weeks ago, so it's very uh, soon to have any um, analyzed data. So we don't have that yet achieved, but uh, we have uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa a second target that at least 35% of the budget should be uh, for mobility with the least developed countries. Again, uh, there is a link where you can find uh, which are the least developed countries in the African region. This was achieved already in 2022. Uh, but also in 2023, and we even see that the, the percentage is, be, uh, is increasing. Again, when we come to the MedNet countries, we can see with how many among the 49 uh, sub-Saharan African countries we have some cooperation. I was very impressed uh, with the Spanish results, uh, 37 out of 49 in 2022 and 40 out of 49. So I don't know where is Loreta, but uh, congratulations for your work in Spain. Uh, we know it's difficult. We know it's difficult, so that means that a great promotion has been done. Uh, in Spain among, among your universities, and they were really eager to, uh, to engage our African partners. We know there are practical obstacles, and we are trying very hard uh, with our inclusion uh, measures to overcome them. Um, we see, of course, many other, many other countries with uh, equally impressive um, uh, numbers. France cooperates with many, uh, Turkey, and overall we see uh, that there is an upward trend uh, only, I think, with the exception of France, that had slightly uh, fewer countries for 2023. But overall, we see even for the smaller countries, uh, and here we need to understand that smaller countries receive a smaller budget from us, so it's not so easy to engage with so many countries uh, around the world. Even there, we see a positive trend that call year by call year, we have more and more cooperation. Just to start concluding, because I think there are many people that need to talk after me, um, some main messages for the MedNet institutions. Uh, please, please, please try to diversify your African partners with focus on the least developed countries. We saw already that this is happening. It's a message from our side to continue in this positive trend. Um, you can organize country-focused contact seminars. We know a few examples uh, that with the help of the national agency, there has been um, missions of universities that visit a specific country to establish new contacts, uh, participate in TCAs like this one. Uh, and uh, you can search for African partners experienced maybe in other parts of the program, like capacity building that might be newcomers for ICM, but like this it would be an easy way to find uh, who has uh, been working in Erasmus Plus already. Some messages for our African institutions present here. Uh, on the other side of the coin, please diversify your European partners, uh, including from smaller countries in Europe, because we saw that they still have budget that can be used for international credit mobility. Uh, you can search for experienced um, ICM beneficiaries via the same uh, results platform. Uh, I've put there the filters you have to use, but we can see it maybe in the, one of the workshops, how you can utilize the Erasmus Plus results platform um, to find partners. Follow the local activities of your NEO or your ENFP. Uh, and you can use also the EU multi-rank to f find excellent European partners in a given academic field. For those that are not familiar, U Multirank is, uh, is a website uh, developed with Erasmus Plus funding. It's a, a website that allows you to find a ranking of universities, but with your own um, filters, so you can select a specific academic discipline. So it's not like the usual um, world university rankings we find, that they have fixed criteria, but with you multi-rank, you can actually make your own selection. So if in your university you want to focus on certain faculties or certain departments for your internationalization, by using you multi-rank you can find the, um, uh, the European partners that really excel in the specific field. And some common messages for all. Um, it's always useful to find a specific angle for your partnerships. By checking which countries we had here, I thought that a cooperation between island states could be a nice angle to play with. We have Cabo Verde, Cyprus, Malta, Mauritius. Uh, so it could be a, an interesting thing because similar countries 
face similar challenges. So when we talk about um, climate change, when we talk about infrastructure, um, uh, you can have very interesting ideas on the, the disciplines that you could use for your international credit mobility projects. And of course, think always about Erasmus Plus opportunities as a, as a um, uh, uh, full synergy. So uh, we're trying very hard to convince that uh, you don't need to focus on mobility or only on cooperation. We've seen many good examples that one leads to the other. So an ICM partnership could be complemented, for example, by Erasmus Plus virtual exchanges or a very good capacity building higher education uh, project could lead to an Erasmus Mundus design measure. So you have to uh, have the full variety of actions. Of course, ICM is one of the most accessible actions. Uh, for the majority of um, institutions outside Europe. We know that many times it's an entry point, uh, but we've seen uh, very good examples and with our colleagues from the capacity building unit that um, in many countries capacity building is used to strengthen the capacity of the international relations offices of the universities in a partner country so that they can more um, uh, efficiently manage also mobilities. So um, every part of the program contributes to the other. You have to take them all together. Uh, and uh, I think with this, yes, this was the last slide. I will uh, conclude and I'm happy to see you all in our workshop for international credit mobility. Thank you. We thank you so much. Yes, can I have this? Thank you. And uh, we shall move on by calling to the stand Mr. Anastasios Tirakidis from Education and Culture Executive Agency, who is going to give us information on centralized actions, capacity building, Erasmus Mundus, and so on. Please. Hello, hello. Uh, here, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for inviting uh, the, com the executive agency in this event. It's always an opportunity for us to see more light on the activities we are managing centrally in Brussels. Still very important also for uh, the uh, involvement of all of you to uh, understand better the needs, the objectives, what we are pursuing by uh, running these uh, activities. Uh, uh, I would like first to start with uh, the capacity building. Here we will have, uh, and then I will move uh, a little bit also under Erasmus Mundus, which is nevertheless another uh, presentation. Let's hope it will work so. Uh, just a few words on the objectives that are uh, important for the capacity building in higher education. So uh, what is already uh, mentioned by my colleague, we try to uh, help the modernization of the higher education in the, uh, around the world. To be honest, we are uh, one of the very international, the international dimension of uh, capacity building is uh, enormous. So every region of the world is, uh, almost every region of the world is part of the program. So what we are trying to do is the inclusion uh, aspect of the, of, the, uh, pro of the action is to bring uh, societal impact on the countries by bringing people with fewer opportunities on board in activities that are uh, implemented by the, by, the, by the universities, the accessibility of uh, less uh, privileged people in the higher education. This is also an element that is, uh, that is looked after. Innovation, so bring new ideas on the on, on part of running the, uh, the university business, new ideas on making it more efficient, the governance, so you create a, a robust administration within the universities in order to be able to stand in uh, 
high demand uh, international uh, projects. We, cooperation is not only regional, it can be also cross-regional. This we will see also uh, later on. Just a few words on the regions that I was talking before. The eligible region it starts from uh, Western Balkans and goes down until Caribbean. For the time being, uh, this is uh, what I wanted to point out, for the time being, Russia is out. This will probably change in the future. As to the very component of the, of the program, so uh, the capacity building higher education has three strands, three uh, distinctive uh, strands. Each of them uh, follows a different uh, target, uh, aims on, on different aspects of uh, the higher education. We will see this uh, in detail later. All the, the whole, in, all, in every of these three strands, what is uh, as an umbrella, that is uh, important are the overarching uh, priorities of the European Commission. It's the Green Deal, the digital transformation, and so on. This we will see also uh, later. We have a simplified budget system. This is the called lump sum two budget system, which simplifies the uh, calculation of the grant that will be available for the project, but also the handling of, the, of one activity in the lifetime of three to four years. And then uh, we became also a corporate, so it's one tool that covers all different activities. So it, uh, from this point of view, from uh, being less afraid from uh, having different uh, working environments and so on, when applying and when running a, a, pro a project, when applying a proposal and running a project, this, this is also simplified and, and maybe even more efficient. I was talking about the uh, regional, uh, the overarching priorities, and here you see these are the five overarching priorities of the pro of the action of the Commission that is uh, that are relevant for the action: the green green deal, digital transformation, integration of migrants, governance, peace and security, and uh, in human development, and sustainable growth and jobs. And next to it, you, you see in the next, uh, next to the, this, uh, there is the column with which regions are relevant, are, should build projects around these overarching uh, priorities. And there you can see that both uh, South Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan regions, uh, so basically the, the, our audience here are uh, relevant, all the, uh, the five uh, overarching priorities are relevant for all these two regions in, uh, in every country. A um, few words now to, to see the dimension <coughs> of, the, uh, of the project within, under these strands. So for strand one, which is uh, access uh, to cooperation, it's for newcomers, it's uh, less complex uh, uh, project set up, uh, it's easier to jump in. It lasts two years or three, maximum three years, and the funding is uh, from 200 to 400,000 euros. So for strand two, where we go a little bit deeper in the, <coughs> sorry, in the, part, in the objectives that are followed by, <coughs> by the project. There, the duration is, again, two to three years, but the funding increases uh, almost uh, double, uh, exactly double. And then we have the structural reform projects, and here is where we uh, aim uh, to bring some uh, structural reform in the country, in the law, if you want, of the higher education, uh, in the countries, so that uh, it brings a, 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 a real structural uh, result from the cooperation with different countries. And that's why uh, the involvement of the higher education minister, or the ministry responsible for higher education, is uh, uh, an imperative uh, uh, participation. So they have to have these projects, the ministry participating into it. So the duration increases from three to four years and significantly also to the, the, the grant that is available. It's up to one million euros for this uh, cooperation. A um, few words, but this, these are all uh, available also in the program guide, but just to catch your eye. So 
cooperation you can have. Um, first of all, there are always uh, European universities involved in, 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 in a project. Then you can have a national project, uh, which means that the uh, participation of universities together with the Europeans are only from one country from the region. So, for example, it is France, Italy, and Moroccan universities, for example. This will be called a national project. Then we have a multi-country regional project. Then are again the Europeans uh, 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 part, uh, cooperating with uh, several countries in one region. So France, Italy, and then Morocco, Tunisia, and Egypt, for example, in one region. And we have also the multi-country projects again. So it, they are again the European universities. And then we have different uh, countries and universities participating from different regions. We can have France, Italy, Morocco, and uh, Ethiopia, and South Africa. This will be called a, a multi-country cross-regional project. A, a, each of these projects has its its level of difficulty to implement, but uh, there, there are these the, uh, glo uh, global, the regional dimension of the, of the proposals. A little bit now, a few details more on, on, on uh, maybe, uh, and, and to show also the size of the funding that is available for each uh, strand. So as we said, uh, the strand one is the jumping in into the program, into the action. So it is uh, less demanding in the objectives. It targets the newcomers. It targets the remote areas uh, for, 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 from the universities that are located in remote areas in, within a country. Um, it looks for uh, the people with fewer, with fewer opportunities to have the chance to jump into the a project of, uh, of higher education. Uh, and uh, then it's uh, a first approach to reduce the, the let's say, the international, internationalization gap that uh, built up capacities in the internationalization. So set up maybe an international secretary uh, and so on in a university so that it fits, uh, it, 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 it improves the capacity. Oops. It, improves the capacity for uh, cooperating in an international project. So um, the, the budget was around 30% uh, for, for this uh, strand one. Here we have a more substantial uh, aspect to look for uh, in the cooperation for uh, under strand two, this uh, component of the program. There we have uh, to look in the, go into deeper into the de design of uh, curricula to strengthen the higher education capacities uh, to network, so uh, create synergies between, uh, cooperation synergies between, between different universities, notably with the European, but also among uh, different universities in the same country or in uh, regional uh, countries or in cross-regional uh, dimension. And uh, this, this, this is the list of uh, learning and teaching methods. So as we said, curricula, way of uh, looking. So exchange of good practices with European universities that can be applied then uh, locally. So the budget here uh, increases significantly. We go to 50% or around 50% of the funds available and the projects to be uh, to be uh, supported increase also uh, significantly. And here we come on the more uh, substantial, uh, uh, let's say, more structural uh, way of uh, supporting the higher education uh, development. Here we uh, in increase the capacity, we try to increase the capacities uh, in, in to modernize the higher education systems, identify syst uh, synergies between uh, ongoing uh, EU initiatives. I'm thinking about the Erasmus Mundus. Uh, I'm thinking about capacity building in, 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 uh, in, in, in not in vet, but uh, in youth, for example. So what can all this together bring uh, uh, a structural reform of the higher education in the country? And there, as we said before, we uh, look also uh, the participation of the 
Ministry of Higher Education for each of the uh, countries uh, involved in the project that will lead maybe even to uh, update, upgrade, the, the, the change the law for higher education that makes it fit also uh, according to the international uh, standards. As we were talking about uh, uh, dimensions and funding possibilities, these are uh, around 100 million euros that are available every year for this uh, type of, uh, of uh, cooperation. Um, and there is, uh, to show also the cross-regional uh, di cross dimension of the, of, of the action, we have uh, around 10% of the budget that is available goes to the cooperation of this cross-regional uh, project. All these uh, details are uh, available in the FTOP, what we call Funding Attenders Opportunity Portal, that is probably very well known. Uh, it's the, the entry point is very simple, so uh, how the consortium uh, should be uh, built up, we have the universities, and then, and then uh, the partners can be any other uh, uh, organization or type of organization that is uh, uh, active in the labor market in the field of higher education. Nevertheless, there are minimum criteria that has, have to be respected, so we have to have a certain number of universities from different countries. These are also uh, uh, explained there. So, uh, specific rules apply per region and per uh, strand, so please pay attention on this. <laughs> uh, um, eligibility criteria, what we call eligibility criteria, because it is a pity to overlook some of the criteria and then lose the chance to be evaluated on your idea. So uh, you have to fulfill this criteria. This criteria needs to be fulfilled in order to allow you to compete for, with your idea against uh, proposals submitted from other universities. So, uh, in, very important to reach at least this, uh, this uh, stage of in, in, the, in the evaluation phase. So, uh, lump sums quickly on the proposal uh, is split, the budget of the proposal is split per uh, work package, per partner, per, uh, so you have to have a very concrete idea of who does what and at what time and under which, uh, let's say, overarching heading, uh, a, a header. So this will, uh, you will define the costs of this, of, of, for these activities by each of the partners. Then the contribution that will come from uh, the, the action goes to 90% of the cost you will estimate for, for this, it's a generous uh, support that is given. And then uh, this will nevertheless will be evaluated from us to see whether it makes a sense. There is a logical consequence of what activities are going to be implemented, uh, whether they are excessive costs <coughs> or costs that are not well explained. And there will be uh, finally, um, uh, a final amount that will be fixed then for, 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 for when signing the contract. And the change, the real change starts, uh, is, starts here. So once we have fixed the lump sum, so in the contract, uh, then you will not be uh, asked to report on finances anymore. So you will get the grant and what will be looked after is whether you have implement it, what was uh, foreseen, what is uh, contractual binding in the contract. We will not ask you to give us the, the invoice of this uh, cost, to give us the, no, it's only the activity. Did you implement the activity to the, to, and to what extent you have reached your objectives? If all this has been done, so no finances, no other finances, you will be paid the next tranche of the grant. This, this we call a simplification from, uh, from both sides, for, for both sides, from your side or also from us. So the focus switches completely from micro 
uh, management of looking every cost and goes directly to the uh, to having achieved the objectives of of what was the idea behind the proposal before we reach that uh, level and go into the to the implementation phase and the reporting phase you have to uh, uh, compete with uh, the award criteria how well will this uh, be addressed in the proposal and as in compared also with the other uh, proposals here are the four award criteria that you built around that you built uh, your project each of them has specific mentions in the program guide of what exactly it uh, entails and uh, then there will be 60, at least out of the 100 points, you have to have 60% 60, 60 of these uh, points uh, in order to be able to uh, have a chance for funding. But uh, to, as we are talking about, uh, we don't um, complain about applications. We receive uh, around 1,000 applications every year. So the, the funding threshold is above the, the actual funding threshold goes above the 60 points. So the competition is high and, and six, reaching only 60 points, sometimes it's not enough to uh, get the funding. So you have to be good and then very good in order to uh, get the funding. Here, a, a, a quick presentation, so just to understand also how, how this mechanism works. The proposals are evaluated by evaluation committee that is set up by officials from the agency with the other uh, commission services that are part of this uh, action. There will be, a, a rank, we ask external experts to assess the proposals. There will be a ranking. The ranking will be confirmed by the evaluation committee. And the top ranked proposals will be sent to the EU delegations to have uh, the consultation process with the EU delegations. There we check uh, whether, uh, as, as we said, one of the eligibility criteria is the participation of universities uh, from every country of the world. As we are not able to know in each detail uh, the higher education system in each country of the world, we sent the high-ranked proposals to the EU delegations to get uh, their confirmation that the eligibility criteria when it comes to the university participation are fulfilled. Then, uh, uh, depending on the quality of the proposals and the budget available, as we said, the, the, there will be a ranking and the funding threshold will stop when the money for this region is uh, exhausted. And then, uh, and then, and then the, there will be uh, uh, the approval of the hierarchy in the agency by our director and the news will be sent out to the, to the applicants. So, um, here, quickly, the place where you can find all this uh, material, the call uh, documents uh, in FTOP, as we said, and uh, the publication follows exactly more or less the same pattern in all Erasmus, so it, the, it's around, published around uh, November, and uh, the deadline is always in, in February. Uh, we, we have also uh, several, we organize also several training and for info days as we call them to uh, worldwide to bring the attention to every, uh, everyone interested into the action to explain what are the objectives we follow, what are the characteristics that uh, we look after. And there will be, these are also announced on our website and will be, they are organized regularly once, once the call is open for, for application. Few statistical data will not stay long here. This will be always available in, in, for you for going back and uh, have a, a look. So you see that the big share of the budget goes to strand two proposals. So which means that the competition there is uh, high. It's enormous. Then uh, strand three, as, as it 
the, it, it, it has a real focus on the structural reform, it gets a, 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 a smaller part of the budget, and strand one proposals. For so far, we have implemented two calls. There you will see that 159 uh, proposals were selected uh, last year as compared to 145 the year before, and this will increase. We go for 160 plus this, this year, so uh, 170 even. This shows that uh, year after year the budget increases and therefore also the opportunities uh, for uh, receiving a funding. Mm. Uh, here maybe an, an interesting uh, also uh, uh, statistical bars. So there you see that indeed Region 3 has a, a smaller portion as, as regards the, the, the number of projects selected, which uh, stems from the a smaller amount that is available for Region 3, South Mediterranean countries. And there you see that the uh, real focus is on the Sub-Saharan African countries where the budget is uh, high and therefore also the projects that have been supported are high. Still, there is always, as I said, an increase year after year. Um, here the success rates of submitted and uh, selected uh, pro proposals. You will see that Region 3 has around, uh, so the, we, although the budget is small, we receive a lot of application and with, from South Mediterranean, and then the success rate goes a little bit down, whereas in, in other regions, where in Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, it is quite uh, high. Mm. Projects per region and per country. So, uh, these are in, in, in interesting statistical uh, uh, figures. Per strand here, you'll see three projects for uh, strand three, for strand one under region three, 11 under region four, uh, for strand two, and so on for the South Mediterranean region. The amount that was spent. For, uh, for these uh, proposals. It's not uh, little money, so it, uh, it, it, it shows that there is a, let, a lot of demand and which is covered then by the funding provided. So it's not uh, little money. And uh, as, we, as I was uh, starting my presentation with overarching priorities, here and uh, here you can see what is the main uh, overarching priority that were addressed by the project that they received funding, sustainable growth and digital transformation, are the top uh, two ones, followed by the Green Deal, depending on the, on, the, on the region, then for which regions each overarching priority can be uh, of importance, uh, make a sense. So you will see also the distribution of the of the pro proposals under which, uh, under the overarching priority. Here, top coordinator countries. So the role of the coordinator country is uh, of, uh, okay, it has higher demands than just participating in the country. Yeah, there you see, uh, okay, the, the, the coordinating countries, the top coordinator countries come from Europe. Nevertheless, you have also Ukraine, for example, I see there, uh, Georgia, Armenia, Belgium, and the only country from these top coordinator countries uh, from Sub-Saharan Africa is South Africa. But this is just the coordinator, the role of the coordinator. Every partner in the proposal has equal rights, they are participating on equal footing, but it's just who has the lead in, in the communication with the agency, who signs the very grand agreement, and so on. Never, and here are the top partner countries. And there you, you see that uh, we have uh, Ethiopia in it. Morocco is in the middle field. It's not the lowest, but not, of, not the highest, but also not the lowest. So uh, Morocco, South Africa, uh, Tunisia, uh, Kenya, and uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, I don't see the other one. Uh, okay, so 
the, there you see that um, the program is known, is, 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 a, is a term in a lot of countries. We have a lot of uh, participants, participants from uh, different countries of the world, and some of them are even on the top uh, rates of participation. This quickly on the capacity building. I don't know now if I can have a few words on the Erasmus Mundus. Uh, I, uh, I, think, I think it's, it's a good uh, also to focus on the different, um, let's say, conception of the Erasmus Mundus. While uh, we, with capacity building, we try to uh, build up the capacities of the, of the higher education. This leads necessarily then to have more, uh, uh, let's say, established cooperations. And once you have uh, agreed on the curriculum modernization, you have agreed on the services, international uh, secretariat of the, of the, in the universities in the third countries, you have maybe even participated in ICM activities. Then uh, what comes as next is the uh, funding and the opportunities to cooperate under the Erasmus Mundus uh, action. The, the, the idea that is built uh, around this co uh, cooperation is the component of a master, for example. Uh, different universities from the world sit uh, together, agree on the field that will set up a master, uh, the, the mobility paths and so on, that how many students should go to this uh, country and uh, how many to the other country, different uh, mobility paths, uh, opportunities offered, offered to the students within, within one uh, consortium of universities. Then, uh, what, what is uh, the Erasmus Mundus then bring? Uh, it asks for it. As we said, the key word in Erasmus Mundus is jointness. So, joint curriculum, joint procedures, joint application, everything is jointly agreed. And the funding that is coming from uh, the European Commission covers the costs of the university for setting up this, uh, this uh, master, this joint master, uh, being uh, structural uh, costs, uh, building professors, uh, and so on, secretariat, and so on. This is the institutional support that will be given to the universities for running this uh, joint Erasmus Mundus Master. And then the component of the scholarship. There is also a generous uh, component that goes directly to the students after being selected, a competitive, very high selectivity, of course. Uh, very generous uh, uh, scholarship scheme that goes directly to the students. And uh, this, this uh, in, in general, I think this will be the idea of the Erasmus Mundus Joint Masters. This is a very selective uh, process. The competition is very high. And in order to uh, allow, open the door to this cooperation, there is also a smaller uh, initiative, uh, sub, uh, a smaller component that supports initiatives for to go to this direction, which, which is called Erasmus, Giant, uh, Erasmus Mundus uh, Design Measures. There, the, all this discussion, this complex process of, uh, meet, of finding the partners, meeting, uh, meet, several meetings to agree, the professors, the curriculum, and so on, all this are sometimes uh, an obstacle for uh, going to uh, set up this uh, Erasmus Mundus Joint Master. That's why there are these Erasmus Mundus design measures, a smaller grant of 60,000 euros to cover all these uh, discussions and uh, exchanges among the universities in the direction of setting up uh, an Erasmus Mundus Joint Master. All this also available. There will be also a presentation probably in, in, in the, the database uh, dedicated exactly to this action. That's for the time being. I will be happy to meet you also in the, one of the workshops to go a little bit deeper in specificities, if you want, of uh, how to make a, a very uh, sexy proposal that has chances to, to, to get funded. OK, thank you. Thank you so much for this elaborate speech. 
Uh, we shall continue now by giving the floor to the head of the Department of International Relations from University of Piraeus, adjunct lecturer, Mrs. Cristina Kodobulidou, who is going to share her experience with us on ICM. Please. Good morning and from my side. Um, my name is, I am Dr. Christina Kodogulidou and I am head of International Relations Office of the University of Piraeus. My presentation, you referred about my experience from the manage from Erasmus, uh, Erasmus International Credit Mobility and how to use this tool from internationalization of higher education. You know all the Bologna process, Erasmus Plus and the transparency tools, CTS and EFQF, give us the higher education system, uh, give us a more degree for internationalization. How to start the international credit mobility? All European universities have been participating in the program since 2015 by the implementing strategy for internalization plan from the University of Charter. I refer my experience from the University of Piraeus and from Construction International Credit Mobility from Greek universities. University of Piraeus. University of Piraeus location in the first port in Greece and select to cooperate with university from South Mediterranean and Sub-Saharian countries. You have priorities in the charter, main priorities from uh, this is uh, uh, strategy partners. Uh, for example, it's very focused for us, is geographical importance and common strategy in economy, maritime, and tourism. And start. The, the first year, uh, founding, um, uh, take founding from this cooperate, from three universities, two countries, and uh, two universities from three is from Mediterranean area. The last year, receive money about 72 university from five geographical region, uh, 43 from this university from Africa, uh, Sub-Saharia and Mediterranean area. Uh, this is graph all uh, you describe of uh, uh, all the institution agreement uh, all this year per region and this is international how to have agreement from the university from Africa. Consortium from Greek public universities. A start 2019, the first phase from five university, coordinator University of Piraeus, National Technical University of Athens, University of Creta, Democritus University of Thrace, Padion University and Social and Political uh, sciences and two not academic partners, NGO organization Earth and Youth Makers Hub. Sorry. After two three years, come with us and two more universities: University of Macedonia and Harokopio University, and uh, three academic partners. Uh, municipality of Piraeus, Athens Chambers, and a development organization of Kozani. Uh, give us at value, this is, um, this is the other partners, because, because uh, increasing cooperation between Greek universities and create common strategy and policy for internalization, strengthening the relations between education and research, and start a have common synergy about the companies and social actors. From the start, you receive money from 19 universities from five regions. Form from this is from uh, African countries. The last years receive 
uh, financial to recuperate 72 uh, university from five regions, 14 from that is this is Africa. Uh, this is bilateral agreement with all university in consortium, and this is from uh, region of Africa. What to part in consortium and what to participate? Uh, participate in the consortium may help change the learning culture with the organization. Uh, in order the successful consortium, you need three C, cooperation, coordination, collaboration. Have many, many general objectives, focus in dimension and uh, implementation in Bologna process in partners country, supporting the green transition, focus in inclusion and promoting joint employment. And more expected outcome, focus in rise in uh, participation in ISM program and support the other university to organize and to uh, submit new application of the ICM project. And of course, creation, cooperation with the job market. Uh, after the experience, the experience so far from the manage of the ICM program, after designing the international institutional agreement, has demonstrated to other synergy design mobility. For example, give us the opportunity, the other synergy used the ICM from other synergy. Especially, join doctorate. University of Piraeus creates doctor PhD with Alexandria University of Egypt. Create center of Arabic languages and give in University of Piraeus and give certificate from Greece and responsible from all Mediterranean area in cooperation with Al Nazakh National University of Palestine. Join undergraduate program University of Thrace has a joint degree program with Hoyne uh, University of Egypt in the sport studies and University of Piraeus with Panioneer University in Nairobi, Kenya, Kenya in maritime sectors. A new synergy research project, National Telecom University of Athens has new research project with University of California, Santa Cruz and Brockland National uh, laboratory in the um, field uh, in the physics and University of Piraeus and um, a high institute of technology uh, studies of uh, radars, tennis, artificial intelligence. Erasmus capacity building. Two capacity building uh, uh, have been approved the last years. This is called uh, submitted six uh, proposal. Uh, three from this proposal uh, is the geographical area Mediterranean Sub-Saharian. Uh, from Synergy in Jean Monnet program, creation in the University of Piraeus, the Bologna Center, through the Jean Monnet networking, uh, creation Jean Monnet module of migration, and now your proposal, you submit two Jean Monnet uh, uh, chairs, one University of Piraeus and one from University of Padion. Leaderships. Uh, the incoming Erasmus students helps and found companies from uh, placement uh, with networking from social partners. Uh, Staff Week. Staff Week is very, very useful from international relations officers because have networking with um, a partner university give feedback, uh, good practices, discuss from problems from anything about the program, uh, give us cooperation and contact with international organization, for example, European Association Erasmus Coordinator, TETHUS, CMU, UNIMENT, and High Innovate. Of course, networking with business organization and social institutions. Uh, pilot programs from Create ESN, efforts to have been created for Erasmus Twitter Network in the Partners Consortium from Sub-Saharia University, from Kenyatta University, and from Kabobo University of Uganda, another synergy. Uh, the development synergy with um, development agency in Macedonia, Kozani, with National uh, Agarian University of Armenia of Wine Tourism. 
University of Piraeus and Ducali University of Morocco, the first strategic partner from University of Piraeus and the Consortium, co-organize with the Municipality of Piraeus the um, competition from Blue Growth Mediterranean Area in, blue, in Felt Blue Economy, and University of Piraeus and Michele University in Ethiopia, creation branch at the University of Piraeus. I give you two words only about the equality assurance for networking uh, cooperation through internationalization. There is indicators for matching the profile for internationalization. Indicators help us to set goals and development comparative to benchmarking and um, give us more, more information about how to manage. Um, suggest some indications. Focus for us is Erasmus Mobility Quality Tools. The indicators give us calls for concerning the institution, concerning from, uh, calls from society, and calls from the students. For example, one, um, one example from indicator from organization models, uh, performance for recognition, give us feedback, very, very focused for recognition, and languages issues. For all conclusion, from all these previous re uh, reasons, international mobility in the first step from internalization, and before to close, I close from my presentation from one goat from Aristotle. I live fairity can on. There is always something now coming out of Africa. Thank you for your attention. We thank you so much. And uh, we shall uh, reach the final presentation by giving the floor to the head of the Department of International Relations from the University of, uh, sorry, the, the Vice Rector of International Relations and Outreach from the Hellenic Mediterranean University, uh, Mr. Kostadinos Petridis, who is going to share his experience and give us tips on how to uh, submit and coordinate successfully capacity building projects. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the honor to participate in this meeting. I would like to share uh, my experience from the perspective of an academic and how the Erasmus could be the initiator in order to establish more collaborations also in research. So what I will try, I, I, they have to place my transparencies, but anyhow, I know by, my, <laughs> by hand. So what I would like um, to share with you is like Erasmus is a unique opportunity to collaborate and expand your university and your research profile. So in our, in Hellenic Mediterranean University, the main effort is to, first of all, to cultivate the culture, the culture of internationalization, which encrypts the words of collaboration, communication, and cultural intelligence in order to have, to establish successful projects. So what we are trying to do um, is um, like to, convince our academics, our students, our collaborators why internationalization, that it's something more than money. You know, the funding, it probably is the motivator to the majority of us, but it's not the strategic goal that you should have. The strategic goal is the networking, that it's going, it's going to bring investments in humans, which means partners, that they will bring money, which is something that we need. So through internationalization, a small university like ours that we locate in the island of Crete, uh, is the multiplier, I would say, tool in order to collaborate with the best universities in the world and in Europe, and in order to be able to uh, integrate our strategic actions and our development by collaborating with the best, because this is the only way in order to progress. It's nice to be the worst, because always you can gain something from the, you know, the, the better, you know, from more experience and more engaged uh, uh, partners. So we would, like, we would like also through internationalization to integrate the communication and the openness of our graduate students in order to be able to be the citizens of the world. Not only because of employment opportunities that 
exist all over the place and we should prepare them according to the market needs, but also to develop their soft skills in order to be able to adapt and collaborate and perform under any environment. So collaboration and engagement with any type of internationalization is something that uh, we envision. And I will share my uh, experience as a coordinator on what I'm going to present you. And also, it's a unique opportunity for the universities, but also for the states to apply this diploma science to develop and transfer your values through your collaborators to the different regions all over the place. So the activities that we have coordinated and we are doing until now and in, in a weekly basis uh, in Hellenic Mediterranean University includes any aspects of internationalization. Internationalization at home, for example, to invite best scientists, uh, the scientists, and not only best scientists, but also political decision makers in order to teach our staff and teach our network through our uh, platforms. The participation, of course, as Christina, my colleague, has shared with you before, the participation through K131 and KA171 mobility for students and staff. Uh, the participation in almost all KA2 centralized actions, starting from the capacity building projects, moving to virtual exchanges in order also to incorporate this aspect of mobility, the virtual mobility to develop this culture, because internationalization, I repeat, is a culture, uh, in order to perform even better research. Uh, Erasmus Moodus is something that uh, uh, we recently engaged, and uh, alliances for innovation. Collaboration also with the European universities is something that also we try to become as a hub for other universities, from universities outside of Europe, in order to uh, get engaged. So the centralized actions that your institution can participate, I will go very fast because this is something that the previous speakers, they have uh, already uh, developed. It's Erasmus Moodus. I will present our case later on. Some statistics, some funding that um, you can challenge through the participation of the Erasmus Moodus, but also for, for the preparation measurements. You know, the rates, you know, are, you know, the last year rates, you know, it's, thank you very much for the Commission for enhancing these funding opportunities. Erasmus capacity building projects in all activities, strand one, strand two, and strand three. Here, you know, I'm more generous myself. Uh, I use better, uh, better areas with one million euros budget, but right now it's 800, you know, the maximum for strand two. If you go to stand three, the maximum is one million. If you go to stand one, my previous speaker has already presented this. Um, the capacity building for a VET, also another opportunity for you to engage from the perspective, mainly the, the priorities, like how to uh, upskill and reskill the um, competencies of your graduate students or even you know the lifelong learners uh, the, you know the youth is something that also it's like a priority of the European Commission, I suspect, because they would like to build this culture, as I mentioned, in order these people to become better European citizens, to spread the European values also to strategic alliances like the regions, um, the different regions beyond Europe, uh, and also to engage them to, um, as a policy makers. Uh, virtual exchanges is another activity that is very attractive. I'm very happy that UM6P is partner in one of our, our first virtual exchange that we coordinate. And um, the example of the Hellenic Mediterranean University engage whatever you know I have presented before. And I'm very happy that I have coordinated you know, the, uh, you know, these activities. The first one is like a uh, capacity building project uh, uh, in the South Mediterranean area in nanotechnology and lasers. So you can see that you can address even hard topics, topics that they are related with the research. This is our motivation uh, to link the research that we are doing in laboratory with activities in education, because it's one story. You cannot have research with not, with not updated curricula, and you cannot do good education without good research. And this case takes into the consideration the innovation. So these are opportunities and activities that you should link into your mind with all the activities, education, research, and innovation. So this was a project that uh, made a platform with online courses, nanotechnology, and photonics, included uh, engaged universities and companies. And as a follow-up, because it's not only the project, but what is the follow-up, what is the continuation in order to continue the expansion of your university and your areas, is like we got you know, a, a future emerging technology horizon project, which are among the most competitive one in graphene printing. Uh, we got a graphene flag, flagera regarding you know, uh, graphene-based sensors. And uh, also, uh, we got two related other um, 
uh, Erasmus projects you know, uh, that they are coordinated by the national agency, strategic cooperations, if I remember well, because they, the, ter the terms are changing uh, quite often. So this was like something that shows to you if you do something, you know, more by products they are coming and in all the topics, from the research, you know, to education. Another one is like a multi-country, multi-regional project in pedagogies on how to teach mathematics. Mathematics is a key course for the digitalization of our society. This was the reason, a part of the performance of our students and ours in some cases, uh, like to include a better pedagogies how to teach mathematics because it's a key element for the digitalization of society. Uh, we have performed um, scenarios, different pedagogies, from problem-based learning to scrum uh, to uh, challenge-based learning in order to teach better you know, the fundamentals of mathematics. And uh, as a byproduct, by we have uh, applied successfully two strategic partnership uh, projects within Europe. Uh, the other one is like it's related to you. It's like we were partners in this proposal. It has to do with automations and also soft skills development and how to prepare students from Uganda, Tanzania, and uh, Ethiopia uh, in order to be more ready for uh, uh, employability in their countries according to their needs. And this is something that my uh, previous speaker also has shared with you. Capacity building is not for us. I mean, it's not for the program countries. It's for your needs. And in our work we are going to, to, to explain to you how to write this motivation in order to, to successfully participate in this uh, stra sta starting grant. You know, as a result of the ACTEA, we organized from the, from the 1st to the 5th of April a big conference that we have invited more than uh, 50 uh, African partners and colleagues uh, in the topics of food industry and safety uh, in Crete. Another one is uh, like another capacity building project with Vietnam and uh, Vietnam and Myanmar. Myanmar did not participate because of the political situation. So we developed green skills over there with the students of Vietnam. Uh, we integrated arts within STEM. So we have exploited you know, the whole acronym STEM in order you know, how to use recyclable garbages in order to make more green campuses in this country. Um, and uh, we have now, you know, the virtual exchanges product, Impact, Inter-Mediterranean for Peace. Uh, this was like a challenge right now because of the situation, but this is diploma science. This is like how you can do science, science through education, how to bring people from conflict areas to communicate virtually in order to solve the issues that we face right now in the area. So this is something that UMP6P is a partner. And uh, we continue with these virtual exchanges, which means like it's like co it's like coils, like virtual. You know, the classes we organize roundtables for the people and academics to speak and train them in online teaching. Uh, European universities is something that also is like an initiative that we participate in. We would like, we have engaged in you know, us mainly uh, universities from the ba Western Balkans in order to become an associate partners of our activities. And uh, also through this initiative, we have managed to attract more than 8 million euros as a byproduct of this alliance. So this shows to you that internationalization is much more, as in Barcelona, they say like it's much more than a club. It's like, you know, it's like a whole network. It's a, internationalization opens your universities and your societies to opportunities and to the world. And as a result of this, we have the Erasmus Moodus project that we started in October. You should register our student. And we have 1,400 uh, euros as a grantship for talented students. We start in October 2024. The main topic here is nanotechnology. You can see whatever we are doing, it's related around a, a scientist, a researcher, what we are doing, what I'm doing in my laboratory. So everything is around. So you are doing educational activities in order to bring talents and you link Horizon, you know, which is mainly for the research with education, which is Erasmus. So this is like the opportunity that you have and you should exploit through the networking event and the opportunities that you have through Erasmus. And uh, the conclusions is like, I have to say one thing, it's just to dare, be open, be able to operate even with people that you don't like, but you should collaborate, be ready to do a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures, but at the end of the day, if you demonstrate resilience, it's the only way to success. And with this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you. Is it on? Okay. We thank you so much for the speech. And uh, now before the questions that uh, you may uh, pose and the discussion, we would like to uh, give a thank you gift, a memento from our State Scholarships Foundation, which will be given to the keynote spe uh, speakers from our director. Please, Mr. Papasayu, are you coming up? Can we call to the stand our first speaker, Mr. Ivaliotis, I think? Yes, it was the first one. Or in alphabetical order. Whatever, yeah, yes. They're all important. Symbolic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too. It's from a Greek artist, Mr. Samios. You can show it if you want. It's the victory. And uh, it was made for the 70 years of our organization. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank, thank you, you for being here. And can we call the next one, please, up to the stand? The Birazi. This, was, this comes as a surprise. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's symbolic. It's a gift from uh, the organizing national leaders for your contribution. It looks, we it thank looks you very great. much. It's the victory as the artist. United, <laughs> united we can manage. Okay. Thank, you thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We would also like to call Latifa Dadawa, Dadawi. to thank her for all the help. Thank you so much. This is thank so, you very much, so Latifa, nice. for thank everything. You. You're just, welcome. <laughs> we would have the follow-up, but just to remember us, it's a symbolic gift for thank you. you. Thank so you beautiful. very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything as well. Next one, please, uh, would be uh, Mariam Elaishawi from uh, UM6P. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you very much. Uh, we have to also to give the gift for the, the president, president, so double gift. <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> Mr. Lapti. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for everything. For being here. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Mrs. Kodogulidou. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for this is an interesting seminar. It's helpful. It is, it is. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> and the last but not least, Mr. Petridis. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you very much, much for everything. Thank you. This is for you, symbolic. Thank you. And now it's time to uh, have all the questions that uh, you may, they may come up, they may have come up from all the speeches. Uh, would someone like to pose the first question to discuss a subject? Okay, it's time to think. We had a lot of uh, food for thought today. Um, it was a very productive uh, way of uh, having all this information coming from all these important people. So we can have a break, network, and then we we'll shall, shall move on to the workshops. 
both work, uh, workshops are going to be done upstairs where you can find uh, uh, ICM and centralized actions, two groups, exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Can we please, um, could we take a picture before you leave so we are sure that we have our family picture? <laughs> Before you go outside, we're going to be taking a commemorative picture, so if you can all be uh, with us on stage. very simple. Tall people behind <laughs> so we can have everyone on the picture. Uh, can you uh, move a little bit uh, to closer to the center? to move to the center so we can have everyone on stage. a little bit? Yeah. So we're going to take two pictures. A very official and serious picture first. <laughs> and there are a very fun one that is that is not going to believe in this <laughs> this auditorium, okay? So we'll start. I'm going to join you, and then we'll start with the serious picture, okay? Very <laughs> official for the official uh, website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
And now, the fun one. Come on. One, two, three. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yeah, I see you there.